Okay, let's talk about branding and marketing. Woo, all the fun stuff. So you have your business, you have your products and your services, um, you've registered your business, you have your business not name, and you are ready to start marketing your business. This is a really exciting place to be. So I wanna take my legal hat for a second, take it off and talk a little bit just about branding and marketing in general. There are lots and lots and lots of resources for trying to you know, get your brand together. There are lots of you know, things about picking your brand colors and forming a brand book and you know, how to use Instagram and Facebook effectively. Um, so I don't want to go into depth about uh, you know, marketing in spaces where you have lots and lots and lots of free resources because they are available all over the place. Again, marketing is very important. So you definitely do want to be strategic when you're thinking about your brand colors and your, your logo and, you know, your, um, what your website's going to look like, the look and feel of your website. There are lots of different resources you can use. Personally, when it comes to websites, I am a Squarespace fan. I think Squarespace is very user-friendly for people that don't have a lot of experience in website designs and the templates are very easy. You can absolutely, you know, there are lots of others out there. There are different types of um, website platforms that you can use and other people might prefer different things. I love Squarespace, so that is what I use and I highly suggest it for people that are um, new to building their own website. Again, this is team do everything yourself. If you have the money to afford, you know, somebody else to design your website, do you boo, I support it. But if you don't, Squarespace is a great uh, place to start. I also love the app Canva for branding, um, C-A-N-V-A, and I will make sure that I include a link where you guys can get a free or um, you can get a discount for a download if you want to get the Canva Pro account, which is really, really helpful. It has a lot of um, even more extra additives that the regular Canva, free Canva doesn't have, uh, but it's a great space with templates for actually creating all of your social content, all of your Facebook headers. There are so many different options on Canva for, and I've seen some of the most professional social media um, posts using Canva. I've seen logos created on Canva that are amazing. So if you want to do it yourself, Canva is a great space to create all things social, um, all types of marketing materials, presentations, pitch decks, all of those things. Now, in addition to um, Canva, if you are someone that's like, Kiki, I'm not doing none of this myself, but also I don't have a budget like that, you can use Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R. -R. You can find someone on Fiverr to do practically anything for low cost. It used to be that everything was like $5. Now people are charging a lot more because inflation, that happens, uh, but it's still a great resource for people to design a logo for you or design a website, or you can get all kinds of things done um, on Fiverr. My card game, actually, I talked about in an earlier video, like you cards, we actually had our logo in card deck and the cards themselves were designed on Fiverr. It's very cost effective. I have had great experience using Fiverr. So if you're creating marketing materials and you're really not trying to do Squarespace and you're really not trying to use Canva, even though you can do it, I want to empower you all very user friendly. Um, it's another great option to use Fiverr to get people to do uh, that stuff for you. So as I mentioned, there is a lot of free resource out there for how to develop the look and feel of your brand. Um, what I want to talk to you specifically about in this video is storytelling and how to use storytelling to you know, bolster your brand and to get people to care about what you have to offer. So storytelling is kind of like a buzzword right now, right? And I have a whole storytelling company, so who would I be uh, to not talk about storytelling? And I think a lot of times people say it and they don't actually know, you know, ex what do you mean by storytelling? Like, okay, of course, everything is a story. Um, your story is your why. It is not what people are buying, it's why they are buying it and why they are buying it from you. 
there might be so many other businesses who are similar to you or maybe almost exactly like your business, okay? We live in a free market where there are lots and lots and lots of options. Most of the time when people choose your brand, it's not necessarily going to be because you're offering a product that is so novel and so different or a service that is so completely different than anything they've ever seen. Hate to break it to you. I'm sure that you are special, but I'm sure you've also heard the saying, there's nothing new under the sun. And so much of what we have to offer, like what we're actually offering when we get down to the nitty gritty of the product and the service is similar to what other people offer. What separates you is you. No matter how many different businesses are offering what you're offering or doing what you're doing, the advantage that you have is no one is exactly like you. Nobody has us, the name of my card game, like you. Nobody has your background. Nobody has your point of view. Nobody has your voice. Nobody has your experience. The things about yourself that you consider to be boring or you know, uncool, other people might hear them and think that they're really freaking cool. We become so numb to our own stories because we're constantly looking at them and thinking them and living them. And you know, we're like, why, what about me is so special? Uh, but really use your story to your advantage because it's going to be what sets you apart. So, you know, if you, for example, I have a friend who has a business in the feminine care um, industry. She sells lots of like feminine care products and pills that are good for feminine health, but her father was a gynecologist. So she grew up around people who were, you know, constantly talking about female parts and it was very, you know, normal for her in her house. And then when she, you know, grew up and left home, she realized that it was like kind of taboo to say the word vagina. Like it was a bad word. She couldn't say, you know, there are just certain things that people weren't talking about. And she was like, there's a disconnect here because if, you know, lots of people have them, but we're also not allowed to talk about it, but these are also issues that affect so much of the population. Why can't we talk about them? Um, so she made it her, you know, life goal to not only normalize the word vagina, but to talk about, you know, female health um, or, you know, women who identify as female to talk about their health and, you know, their body parts and the types of medicines and the ways that we can, you know, use naturally what's in our environments to make sure we're healthy. And she talked a lot and incorporated a lot about growing up at home with her dad. Granted, she grew up with her dad her entire life. Uh, so it might not be novel or special to her, but it separated her from a lot of the other people in the industry who didn't have her story. So, you know, for example, as well, um, if I worked for a, a retail company and we had someone selling a product who was from a very, very small town, um, not too far from where I grew up actually in Virginia, and they were selling nail polish. It was really cute nail polish, um, but you know, there's nail polish all over. But their story was that they were high school girls from a really small town and they wanted to, you know, start a business based upon something that they loved and they were passionate about. They both loved nails and they, you know, decided that they were going to do this and they started in their basement and it grew from this like little small town business into this like big nail business and that story was so heartwarming and people were like oh my gosh of course i want to support two 13 year old girls from a small town with like you know small dreams who are now like you know making it big we love a good make it big story so to them their everyday life growing up in a small town might not have been very important um but to lots of other people that brand story is actually what brought them in to try the product in the first place so a lot of people won't even want to try your product or service if they don't know why um, you're the best person to be providing that product or service. So I really encourage you to just, you know, take some time to think about your own story. And before you even start to do all the research about how to particularly market, you know, your product and, you know, how to create Facebook ads and, you know, create ads that have the most bang for your buck, like all of that stuff is really important. And you definitely want to think 
strategically about how you're planning to market. Um, but I really want you to think about your own personal story. Why are you the best person to sell this product? What about you qualifies you to sell this product? What about you is special or different? What's interesting? You know, tell us about who you are. Find a way to incorporate if this is your business, right? This is your baby, your marriage, your, your thing. Find a way to incorporate who you are into your company and that can help set you apart because if you're really providing a, a product or service that people need and you have a story that people want to buy into, you won't have to overly rely on marketing. Marketing has always existed um, and it's I, it's very important. I am definitely not going to say that it's not important because it is, especially in today's world with social media. Uh, but if you are you know, just starting to think about these issues, you don't have to overly rely on marketing and, and trying to convince people to buy your product if you are telling a story that resonates with people. They're going to be attracted to you. They're gonna wanna buy your product. They're gonna wanna buy into what you're doing. And once you decide what your brand story is, what your story is, your why behind your business, you know, having a page on your website explaining kind of who you are and what you believe, you know, why me, a message from the creators or the owners is always really helpful. Once you have that story, it's time to start thinking about your values and your business values and your story is going to all help you. This is all gonna come together to help you actually put together your business plan. Why is a business plan necessary? Because if you're going to want to raise capital eventually and you're going to want to, you know, potentially get a space or get other people to buy into and become part of your business, everyone is going to ask for your business plan. Um, so before we even get into the specifics of like influencer marketing and, you know, different ways that you can like actually use social media to market your, your products and your service, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but I want you to really strategically think Think about you know your the service that you're offering you have your company name and you you know what your story is it's time to start sitting down and thinking about your values because once we have uh, your values listed and in line you are in a great place to start writing your business plan um, so what are your values your values are the thing I like to think about it I watched a masterclass uh, by I'm gonna say her name wrong, DVF. I'm just gonna say her initials because I say her name wrong every time. I, Diane Von Furstenberg, I think, DVF. Um, and she basically talks about how your, your values or what you hold on to, it's like that little outfit in your closet, maybe your little black dress, your, your favorite t-shirt or whatever, the one that's like always there. Like you go through your closet with spring cleaning and you throw some things out, but there's that one thing that you just can't get rid of because it just goes to the essence of who you are. It's always in the background. Those are your values. That is your brand story. That is what is going to exist. Um, and it's going to, you know, all of your marketing, all of your messaging, all of your brand partnerships, all of the different things that you do in your company, they're going to flow through your values. So it's so important to know what your values are as a company. And I've seen so many companies fall apart because they actually didn't take the time at the beginning to outline their values. So what is it as a company that is important to you? Is it sustainable fashion? Is it diversity and inclusivity or equity? Is it, you know, being a student of people's stories? Is it, you know, customer service? Is it teamwork and collaboration? You know, you there are so many different values. Um, obviously, it, it'll probably be really hard to list them out extensively, but it's so important to come up with a list of values. I will actually include in this link um, a resource that has lots of different examples of values from uh, lots of different companies so you can kind of get an idea of what other companies are doing. Again, that's just to give you some structure in no way or do you need to or should you copy the values of someone else. This is really asking you know, yourself, what are the values of my company? What is important to me? I am creating this brand that's going to be its own thing because these days people really do expect a brand to have its own voice, um, to be able to have an opinion. If something happens in the world and the brand doesn't comment on it, people get angry, right? Like we get, we get angry at the stores or the businesses who aren't commenting on 
current events and who don't have opinions about things. These brands are becoming more and more like real people. So deciding what you value very early on will be so helpful and then you'll be able to say yes and no to opportunities because you'll be filtering everything through your values. So your homework before we start talking about the business plan is number one, I want you to write a paragraph, just a story um, about you growing up um, or about you know who you are, about your experiences, about what you're passionate to, connected to what you do. More or less, this paragraph should be you know why you are the best person to do what you're doing. You are figuring out what your personal brand story is. Next, I want you to come up with a list of values. I suggest that like five or six is a great place to start. Um, if you want to write out lots of values and then narrow them down, that's a great thing to do as well. Um, if you have multiple people in your company, this is definitely something where all of you all should be having this conversation um, because you want to lock down what those company values are. Once you have your company values and a little bit of an idea of your brand story, your why, your why are you doing this, um, you'll be in a great place to actually start putting together your business plan. So in the next video, we will discuss the specifics of a business plan.